Yesterday I went down to Dokirney Falls in Ayrshire to shoot for this tutorial and I'm going to put it together in Photoshop using the focus stacking feature or auto align and auto blend feature and then take it into Luminar and show you the final results. There are different ways of doing focus stacking. Uh, you use within myself, my procedure is auto align layers as you'll see in the tutorial and then I go on and I blend them. 90% of the time I blend them by hand but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to let you see the software blending them. So let's have a look at Photoshop stacking these images and then my entire edit is done in Luminar. Before I start the edit, I thought I'd better point out the focus points of this image so that you get a rough idea of where I was shooting and does it require as many focus points for this type of image? No, but because of the contortion of the trees and the distance between myself and the waterfall, I thought I would give it a try. I haven't edited this image at all yet, so we'll see if it's worked and see if it hasn't worked. So 485 going right up to 490, 485 will be my distance, middle ground, foreground elements because there's two trees here going off in different directions so we'll see how we get on. What we'll do is I'll select all the images. Right now we're in the raw editor and you can see everything that's going on here and as I say I know 485 is my distance that's focused over here moving forward through the image to here which if I remember correctly should be once it clears up down here so you can see the focus in there as well so I'm going to zoom that back out. Right, select all the images holding down shift because we want to edit them all globally and all at the one time. So I'm going to turn the exposure down slightly because you can see as I've got the highlight clipping here. I'm also going to turn the highlights down, not too much because you find if you turn the highlights down too much you get a bleh grey, it just looks horrible. Uh, with the shadows tiny bit and this is affecting every image as you can see here. I'm going to add the texture into this. A fraction. Everything should be done subtly here. Everything throughout your entire edit. Unless you're going for a really extreme edit, do everything subtly. Turn the clarity up a wee bit and I'm also going to turn the dehaze up just it will affect in here. It'll affect the entire image because it's a global adjustment but it'll affect in here just a wee bit. And there we go. I am going to go in and remove chromatic aberration and enable lens profile corrections. We'll see what happens here. I might turn this back off. See how it's taken it out here. I haven't decided on an aspect ratio for this yet, but this is slightly distracting. So that might be okay to leave it like that. And for the purpose of this, we will. I'll go back and I'm going to sharpen the entire image. If I hold down Alt on my keyboard, move the masking key, everything in white is the areas that will be sharpened. So we'll go for that. Right, you'll see down here if you've done it correctly, everything says open images. Uh, if you see it just says open image, it means you've deselected something here. So let's just go for this. I'll leave the rest of my adjustments until I've edited the entire image as I build it up slowly. I never touch contrast there, nothing, because I'm going to get into Luminar to edit this and I usually leave it for Luminar to do. So while it runs through this, I'll speed the video up. Okay, that's as we've now got all the images in. First thing we're going to do is File, Scripts. Load files into stack. Add the open files. Attempt to automatically align source images. Okay, next thing to do. Select all the images by holding down shift. And then in this case, you can see that the file size is 1.68 gig. That's the working file size. What I'm going to do in case there is any small corrections to be made, I'm going to copy all of these up. And to copy them, I'm using a Mac. It's just Command and J because they're all selected. And then I'm going to turn off the layers 
that I don't want to auto blend. So as you'll see, I've, I've got the copies still selected in grey. We then go into edit auto blend layers. And what this is going to do, it's going to look for the sharpest areas. It's the computer searching for them. If you are doing just say a distance, focus to infinity, a middle ground and a foreground, and I've got another image that I'll show you just at the end very quickly. Three points of focus should do it and should cover all the focal planes. Now we're going to go auto blend layers. Seamless tones and colours. I'm not going to use content aware fill, uh, content aware fill transparent areas because I've still to adjust my aspect ratio for the final image. Click OK and let it churn through what it's going to do. I've not got a very fast computer, so it'll take a wee while. I'll speed this bit up. Right, that's it, done it now. What I'm going to do is just go in, search around, we'll see where it's soft. As I say, this is the first time I've done it, so it's not pre-prepared, and we'll see how Photoshop has handled that. So I'll zoom into my distance. And as you can see, soft. Now that could either be Photoshop, or it could be me when I was shooting. So we'll... I'll take the blame in this one. Luckily, the image that I'm going to show you just after this one is sharp right through. I'm going to combine all these layers together. So what I'll do is Command and E, remembering that I'm on a Mac. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue with the edit just to show you the final piece. So I'm going to get rid of all these layers here just by deleting them. And I am now going to crop the image. So that's going to be my crop there. So I'm now going to copy up one. I'm going to go to filter and I'm now going to get into luminar to edit the entire image. There's a couple of distractions in this image that I'm not so happy with, so I may end up cropping it down again. Okay, that's us now in luminar and you can see all my filters down the side here and but images in. First thing I'm going to do, with no sky, so I don't need to use the sky enhancer, and as you can see, the AI recognises that there's no sky, so it doesn't allow you to use it anyway. I'm going to go in and use Accent AI filter, just to boost the image. Everything subtly. Everything really, really subtly, and you can see, if I flick that on and off, how much it's actually changed the image. That is enough. I'm now going to go in and dehaze again. That's going to drag it back just to there. Perfect. Next thing I'll do is a polarizing filter. Just pull the water slightly. There we go. Hue saturation and luminance. The greens, they are vibrant. I'm not so keen on them being just as vibrant as that. Everybody's got different tastes, it is subjective. So I'm going to pull my greens back, more muted, and I may even pull this, the luminance of them back. Yep. If I push the yellows, that tree in the foreground just lifted and in there as well. The blues, I'll show you what will happen to the water if we use the blues. So. Now the decision is, do we make it a bright focal element within it? Although that is the main element of the image. We've got the framing from these trees. Do we decide to have it there? That's where it's down to you as an artist. I'm going to leave it around there. Next thing, structure. And you see, just with these sliders and luminar, it isn't taking away the art of the edit. It's just making it slightly quicker and intuitive. I'm going to add a bit of structure into this, but I'm only going to add it in certain areas. So if I push the structure right up, that happens and it just looks horrible. So again, everything subtle, just to about there. And if I wanted, which I'm not going to do. If I wanted, I could invert the mask and then paint in the areas. But that's actually just giving a nice effect with that. Okay, next thing, I'm going to add a new layer, add new adjustment layer. 
I'm going to go in and I'm going to add the Orton effect. Close that there. We will pull that in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Orton effect off this tree and off this tree. And how I do that is I take the brush and I choose Erase. And I paint and I'll just show you where you can see here the mask that's been created anyway. Everyone except for the develop filter has a mask. The develop filter has to be adjusted in a different way, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. And if I click mask, you can see that that's unmasked. I am going to paint up here as well. And why I'm doing this is I'm with the Orton effect, I'm actually taking away the Orton effect from these two trees to show the texture layer below. When you look at the image, you're not going to see it that much, but at least I know it's been done and I know it's there. And it's just, just using it to emphasise certain areas. I'll just check the mask to make sure I haven't missed too much. Because the brush has a feather on it, if you go over it a tiny bit, it wouldn't make too much of a difference. In this type of image anyway. Turn that off. Remember to click, turn off the brush. Add another filter. Because I'm unsure of the final aspect ratio I want this image to be, what I would normally do is add a vignette in here and bring it in so that your focus is drawn more in towards here. And as you can see, that's actually quite a nice effect there. It's not overdone with that. It was just a nice subtle effect just to draw your eyes in. The reason I can't put it on just now is because I haven't decided my aspect ratio. So possibly what I would do is apply this just now, then go back and do my aspect ratio. And that's what I'll do and I'll catch you back in here. Okay, that's us now back in Luminar. And as I said, I was going to add a vignette and I'm just going to bring that in roughly about 47, 48. Uh, is just about what I'm looking for there. I'm going to hit apply. And while it gets back into Luminar, I've got a couple of effects I like to add in Photoshop. I could do them in Luminar, but I've got them set up here. And for the sake of this video, I'll just keep them here. And it is this autumn and folder. It's just a slight adjustment to the greens. So I hit play. You'll see if I turn that on and off. It's maybe a bit too yellow for what I'm after. It's just to mute the greens a tiny bit. And there we go. Sometimes I like just to finalise an image. I'll take it into back into the camera raw filter just to try a couple of different effects just to see if it can enhance anything or take away from anything at all. And there's a couple of wee distracting elements within this image that I'm going to go in and just attempt to see if it fixes them. So here we go, Shift, Alt, Command, E to combine all those layers together. I'm then gonna go into Filter, Camera Raw Filter. I'm going to pull back the exposure a bit, not much at all. I'm going to push the highlights, pull the shadows down, push the contrast. Lift the texture yet again, but not much at all. Dehaze I'm not going to have to touch. And I may add a couple of bits, elements of lighter areas in here. This I'm going to take down. It's not pulling my eye because I've got the angle through there. But I want to see if it adds to the image when I do it. So I'm going to again reset. I'm going to draw in there place it over it. I turn off my overlay so that I can see the effect. That's it, normal. Pull it back. That might just be enough. I am then going to go to a new effect and I'm going to add more light here. Turn back on the overlay so that I can see what I'm doing. Pull it in and then move it over 
and turn back the overlay off, turn back the overlay, turn the overlay back off and then just lift the brightness because I've got a nice contrast here just at the edges so that's the reason I'm doing that it's and I'm quite happy with it there play with the light there just to lead us through the image and you don't want to lighten darker areas a nice contrast helps lead your eye through the image so I may put one in there, this one I'm going to have to go in and look at Right, I turn that back off and I'm going to lift that Possibly not as much 15 And it ends up taking over the image, so that one didn't work uh, Everything else seems okay And I may, last but not least if I zoom out here, bring down a gradient and bring the exposure down just to keep our eyes focused here. Zoom back in. There we go. Turn the gradient off and I may add yet another radio filter just to emphasize that I'm quite happy with that I'm going to check where the radio filters actually affecting I don't want it to affect these trees up here so if I get into the brush I'm on a raise or minimize minus even I can actually paint that back out and only affect the areas that I want to affect I'll take it off there turn the mask back off and it's at 20 just to see where it's affecting 65 with a lead one in here possibly let's give it a go take it back to the edit mode that one's too bright just there ok right click on this grey Go to custom, I've got my custom set at white That's how the image would look if I click F F There's the final image now What I'll do is I'll show you the before and after How we brought the image in from The focus stacking To the final image So if I just hold down ALT and click in the bottom original layer That's what we brought in After all the focus stacking There's our final edit Well, I hope you found the focus stacking and editing tutorial handy and whether it's worked or whether it hasn't worked in this case it didn't work, that's down to photographer's error that's not, I can't blame that in the software, not totally because as you saw from the original images there was a couple that were soft, that's my fault If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you'd like to see more please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one Thanks again for watching